Good evening. This is Eugene Chan on Straight Talk. The Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Mr. El Junon Yao, is on our show this evening to talk to us about doing business in Hong Kong. Before joining the government, Mr. Yao held key managerial positions in the aviation and logistics sector, and most recently was the CEO of Greater Bay Airlines. Now his portfolio covers a wide range of policy areas, and his bureau is tasked to make sure Hong Kong is an attractive city to do business in. Welcome, Secretary. Good evening, Eugene. How are you? Uh, very well, thank you. Um, you know, the Global Financial Leaders Investment Summit was held successfully just less than two weeks ago, and the message that was repeated and reinforced throughout the three days is that business as usual is in Hong Kong. Do you think our delegates got that message loud and clear, and do you think they actually believe it? Well, the situation is getting better and better each day after the um, zero plus three uh, restrictions is being introduced. And remember, we have the Rugby Seven, and you can see people cherishing in the stadium. I went over there as well, and I can see the energy is back, and the message is loud and clear to the world that Hong Kong is back to normal. Right. So before we go any further, let's look at some latest figures for Hong Kong's economy. It was the third consecutive quarter of year-on-year -year contraction for our, for our gross domestic product GDP and marks the worst contraction since the second quarter of 2020. So how does this compare to Hong Kong's past achievements? The situation is showing a decline recently, but as I well mentioned just now, the business is slowly coming back. And I'm totally confident that the situation is going to improve, especially with the new policies and measures um, introduced by the government. Right, so Secretary, um, I've been doing some research and, and I'm sure people can feel that in the market that our economy actually has contracted 4.5% in the third quarter from a year earlier and in real terms of 2.6% compared to the second quarter. Well, this is quite partly due to maybe the global rise in interest rates, but it has been re reported Hong Kong is the, or we are the only Asian economy kind of in recession and in fact the worst performer in the region. Um, do you see any light at the end of this tunnel and when, when will we be at the turning point? Well, there could be many reasons that uh, due to the pandemic situation that the business is seeing a downturn. And that's why the government is introducing uh, many measures and policies to bring the business back, like to attract the talents and the strategic enterprises to settle down in Hong Kong. Right. Um, we. I mean, this show or many people in the world do compare us with Singapore because we have always been rival cities, but on a regular basis. And this has certainly been more so in the last few years. Um, do you see, I mean, how do you see Hong Kong's strength and advantages, say, compared to a friendly city like Singapore, which is sort of kind of competing with us? And do we still have that niche? Hong Kong is a place which I was born, and I'm very confident about the future of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a place for doing business, and we are the freest economy in the world, as rated by Fraser Institute recently. Uh, we have the rule of law, um, independent judicial system, free flow of capital, free for trading, and the lifestyle is very good. It's a place where the East meets with the West. Mm -hmm. So you, you just mentioned that we just had the, the summit and also we had the rugby sevens and also the FinTech week. All these international large scale events was just recently held in Hong Kong. So how much impact do you expect these to sort of bring our economy back on the right track? Well, it's not just about the economy, it's the message. The message selling to the world that Hong Kong is now back to normal. You have the FinTech, you have the Summit and the Rugby Seven, and next year there will be the Standard and Charter Marathon as well. So all the big events are coming back, and I was told many exhibitors are planning to come back to Hong Kong to do the exhibition. Right. So, you know, um, let's move on to another area of Hong Kong, which has always been tourism. I mean, we, we, we rely on people coming in here, to businesses visiting and, and you know, it has been particularly damaging to the aviation sector. And we now see the recovery in air travel, but we still face a shortage of talent and labor. So, I mean, you've come from the airline industry, you know it very well, yes. like 40 years you told me earlier. Yeah. So how will our local carrier like Cathay Pacific will overcome this sort of challenge and how long would it take to 
build them back to their own capacity? I can't say on behalf of the company, but I'm confident the local carriers are having plans to um, relaunch the business and putting more capacity back to the, to the place to bring people in and out of Hong Kong. And I, I understand they have a very good program to employ more cadet pilots and to uh, provide employment for the local young people um, to rebuild the airline as well. Yeah, I mean, I went to the airport recently. I actually, I went up myself for a short weekend and sent someone off and I can actually see the, the, the sort of the, 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 the flow of people at the airport starting to pick up. But look at some figures. It's only 16% of pre-pandemic level in terms of passengers. When do you expect them, I mean, when do you expect our travel capacity to bring back the 80, 90% of where, where we were? Well, accordingly, maybe it would take about, um, maybe by middle of next year, hopefully. Right. But um, I think it all depends on whether the airline is able to uh, bring back the capacity, um, whether they will have sufficient flights, and especially for the connectivity out yes. of Hong Kong as well. It's quite an interesting phenomenon, isn't it? At one stage, we had a lot of pilots, a lot of crew, then we have a, I mean, a lot of airlines, and now we are going back the other way, where we could have re really built back up our capacity again. So um, let's look at the recent policy address that we had. Um, our chief executive, Mr. John Lee, was here a couple of weeks ago, and we mainly talk about the trawling of talents. That's the word we use. And one thing he said was, he said, Hong Kong has never stopped being attractive. It is in our DNA, and he said we have to be more proactive in advertising our attractiveness and so-called the importance of telling a good story. So do you have anything to add to that? Well, there's a, according to the policy address, we have a plan to um, attract strategic enterprises and talents to come to Hong Kong, and office will be set up under the steering by the financial secretary. And we are going to ask our offices overseas and in mainland to do the job, and they have the um, responsibility to attract talents and enterprises to come to Hong Kong. Mm. Do you have any other plans to ensure the people, in particular or business people, to know of our good story? Well, that's the role of us, and also the role of the um, officers in offices and mainland, to go and tell these good stories, not only from the government perspective, but we can use our soft power to engage in cultural activities, film festivals and go to talk in the um, universities with educations and tell the people the good stuff about Hong Kong. Right, I, I know that you'll be bringing a delegation to Bangkok in a couple of days time. What would be your objective of this tour? Well, that is APAC meeting um, holding each year in different countries by APAC. So my role is to attend the ministerial meeting and to engage with the um, government's ministers. Um, it's a good chance to sell Hong Kong and to tell the situation about Hong Kong and a good story about Hong Kong. Right, uh, so you see some of the de delegates who, who attended the recent financial summit commented that they were pleasantly surprised that the situation in Hong Kong is much better than what they're expecting. So how will you ensure this good piece of reflection will be, uh, will be passed on to your counterpart in, in Bangkok? I totally believe seeing is believing. That's our intention to invite more people, key people from other parts of the world to come to Hong Kong so that they can see the real situation in Hong Kong when they're going back, they can tell the good story. Right. Um, can you tell us a bit more on the specific initiatives in the policy address, how to attract business and strengthen, strengthen our competitiveness? Well, uh, we are going to set up an office under the steering of the financial secretary to attract strategic enterprises to come to Hong Kong and also with the talents. Uh, we are going to set up another advisory committee as well to provide information advice to the uh, financial secretary so that we will be more targeted and more focused on the industries that we are trying to um, bring into Hong Kong for the long-term benefit of the city. Right, you know, I mean, Hong Kong, we have a lot of, a lot of advisory committees and statutory boards and, and I've had the opportunity to sit on some of them. And, what type of people will you be inviting on this committee to making sure it's going to be effective? Because, I mean, there's, I mean, committee have a meeting and they have to be actually put in action. So what will be your plan? Well, the, um, the plan is still under formulation. Right. Uh, likely there will be the key person in those strategic industries like um, artificial intelligence, um, technologies, um, those areas, so that they know 
which industry will be for the long-term benefit of Hong Kong and what companies overseas or in mainland that would be available for us to attract to come to Hong Kong. Secretary, we have to take a break now, but viewers, please stay with us. We will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Secretary El Don Yao is on our show this evening, and we have been talking about attracting more people to do business in Hong Kong. So, Secretary, in the first half, we went through some of the figures in Hong Kong. We look at our strength and some of the measures that the government, through policy address, is trying to look at how to attract the businesses to come back. And then you are very confident that Hong Kong is back because the energy level is very high and you had the privilege to be in Rugby Sevens. So, before we could move on to some other areas, I'm sure the viewers would want to know more about the initiatives from the government. Um, you mentioned you'll be setting up some committees, look at AI and technology that hopefully we can put in action. And I also saw that the Hong Kong government is allocating like 30 billion from the Future Fund to create a co-investment fund which aims to encourage enterprises to do businesses in Hong Kong with Hong Kong government co-investing. What feedback have you heard from the business sector so far and any good news for Hong Kong? Well, it is a new concept actually. Uh, with the co-investment fund with 30 billion Hong Kong dollar. On top of that, we are also talking about um, requests from the enterprises which will have an interest to settle in Hong Kong like land, tax initiatives or financing support. More on that is also helping the companies, employees settle down in Hong Kong with visa applications and also, uh, and also education for their children which are all very important, attracting people to come to Hong Kong, not only doing business, but for their lifestyle, for settling in Hong Kong as well. So all these are very encouraging messages to the overseas companies and the companies in mainland. Right, since you mentioned about attraction for business to come to Hong Kong, I remembered that reading in, say, say from Singapore government, they, actually, they even help the, the spouses of those coming to settle in and actually having them to look for a place to stay. I mean, will we go to that extent and to support our, I mean, our hopeful to come to Hong Kong? I think each case will be looked at proactively by the Bureau to help with the companies settling down in Hong Kong. And most important, Hong Kong is a place where we can ride on as a platform to go into the Greater Bay Area. That is our advantage. Right. You know, the, since you mentioned the Greater Bay Area, I mean, we just had our 20th National Congress in Beijing with Mr. Xi Jinping setting directions for the for next five years. And, and we had Mr. PC Lao, one of the CPPCC members here last week, and he was saying that he, Hong Kong should learn from the central government and be more proactive and give up our positive non-intervention mentality because we can't simply rely on market when the market fails to perform. Uh, what's your perspective on that? And do you think this will make us even more attractive if we're going to be more proactive? Well, the setting up of the 30 billion co-investment fund is the first step, breaking, breaking through the, concept, the conventional concept about um, having a laissez-faire approach in doing business in Hong Kong. So we have to change from time to time. And especially under the fourth five-year plan, we have to participate in the due circulation of the economy growth in China. So we have a role to play, especially for the development in Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So Secretary, you know, Greater Bay Area is just right across the border. We have, they have got a 85 million population. It's yes. very attractive. But are our Hong Kong youngsters ready to take that move? I mean, I mean, no matter what we do, people have to go. And I've, in my experience in, in the past 20 years, I find people are always very complacent. They're not very keen to go. What will you do to encourage more young people? I think there's a lot of education, promotion need to be done with the younger generation regarding the opportunities in Hong Kong. Or maybe doing a program and let the people who um, did a successful story in Greater Bay Area to tell the younger generation about the opportunities and chance available. Right. Anything else you would think of apart from past experience? How would, you, how would you actually bring them there to see it, to believe it, as you said earlier? Well, actually, we have a lot of platform um, available by TDC and also Invest Hong Kong, helping people to settle down in the Great Day Bay Area. And we are going to set up more offices in all those nice cities um, in the Great Day Bay Area to help any company who would like to do business 
in the Great Lake Bay Area so that they know about the policy, the rules and regulations. So all these promotion will be done more proactively. Right. And as you know, let's, maybe we'll come back a little bit and look at the Hong Kong local economy. And the government has revised down our full year growth forecast to minus 3.2%, setting because of a deteriorating global growth outlook, as well as our GDP fell from four, uh, fallen by 4.5% for, from a year earlier. So what are the measures are the government going to do apart to sort of to get our figures up again? Well, actually, we have a lot of measures helping the SME to do the business. We have the BUD fund and raising the cumulative ceiling from uh, 6 million to 7 million. And also the SME EM, EMF fund helping the um, SME raising the cumulative ceiling from um, 800,000 to a million. And we set aside 1.4 billion Hong Kong dollar to help with the exhibition business as well. So that we would like to attract the business to come back. If they are coming back, that will create and generate very healthy economy and also employment opportunities as well. Um, we have set a target for Invest Hong Kong to bring in about um, 1,100 companies in two to three years time and um, trying to give them a target about um, having an in investment about seven. 7 billion Hong mm -hmm. Kong dollar, mm -hmm. uh, which may create about um, 15,000 job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, Secretary, you just mentioned the word convention. I'm sure people in Hong Kong are very familiar of many different conventions held in Hong Kong. But in the last, last, last year or two, I mean, we are very down with very strict COVID uh, uh, related travel quarantine measures. So, it's definitely not very friendly to overseas travels. We were with now, the re even with the recent zero plus three. We are seeing some increases of air travel, but still not far from what we wanted from the overseas travel. So how can we still be competitive with conventions and all that? Because people conventions still have to happen and they will they move elsewhere. So how will you get them back? I think there's a lot of promotion that we need to do, a lot of effort to be done jointly by TDC by ourselves and by, uh, by our office overseas to promote the situation in Hong Kong and telling them zero plus three actually can facilitate their business in Hong Kong for them to um, carry on with the exhibition. And, then, and on, on another front, we are going to expand the exhibition um, area, the phase to de development of the um, HOL Expo and also the um, CEC in Hong Kong as well in order to cater for the future. Right. Um, since you mentioned about the quarantine travel, we do talk about this in different shows and, and many in the business community are still continuing to call for all these restrictions for overseas travel to be safe or totally relaxed. Otherwise, we will continue to be at a disadvantage. We hear that in the news from different uh, leaders in the community. Do you agree with them and any prediction when they might, that might happen? Well, I think we have to be very pragmatic with our uh, um, quarantine restriction. Most important is, is to strike the balance between the interests of the community, the economy, and also um, the life of our people, especially the elderly and the young kids. So um, the chief executive state very clearly the five steps he considered for this um, pandemic um, arrangement. So I think we will go step by step and subject to scientific justification before we can look at further relaxation. Any prediction of when that might happen? Um, I don't want to preempt anything and give false expectation to people. So let the situation um, to be considered. So um, I think the government is looking at it very progressively and proactively in order to address the issue effectively. Right, thank you. I mean, please bring back this urgent message at your meetings in, with the CE and other officials because people do feel the need to to get back to normal, especially when you are overseas, when you come back to Hong Kong, for example, given my experience, coming back, having people full gown and before you do the test is not very inviting. Mm -hmm. um, but let's look at another area like the, the second lot of convo the consumption vouchers were given out during the third quarter, but it doesn't seem to have that has the desired effect because the private consumption expenditure was unchanged compared to last year. So why? I mean, what, I mean, why do you think that has happened? Has Hong Kong people not spent the, the votes that have been given to them? Well, maybe they spend much more in advance before they receive the money. So I think the situation could be very different from time to time. Right. Um, I don't have the real figures on hand, so I cannot 
give a judgment. Right. And also, as people will feel that we, a lot of our retail sales are from the mainland visitors, uh, at this stage, we are not seeing many of the mainland visitors. What would you suggest to the local businesses? I mean, it has been like nearly three years. How can we continue to, to operate or even to, to maintain our, our lifeline until they come back? Well, that's why we have all these funding um, schemes available for the SME, for them to uh, mm -hmm. maintain the business. And especially, we also introduced this um, principal moratorium um, system so that they can pay back the interest for loaning the money rather than pay back the um, principal. And we extend it to the middle of next year and, and extend it for a 42 months period so that they can have liquidity to carry on with the business. Right. during the difficult situation. Right, in the last part of the show, I'm going to ask you a direct question that, you know, in, uh, we hopefully, I mean, we will anticipate, we don't know when, but we will anticipate the mainland to open up, hopefully, in months, not in terms of years, or better in, in days, but likely to be months. Um, you know, in the past, when we had the, a lot of traveling from, the in, uh, from mainland coming in, we have capacity issues, like we, we didn't have enough shops for them. We, people were crowded in the streets and created a lot of conflicts, attention in the community. Is your bureau going to prepare better to welcome them back this time? What would you do? I think the whole government has to work together hand in hand as one team to bring back the business together, whether it is coming from mainland or visitors coming from overseas. We need to uh, be, pre be prepared and making ourselves ready for any business coming back. So we work as one team in the government for the benefit of Hong Kong and bringing back the economy. Right, Arjuna, you are from the business sector. Now you've been into this hot kitchen for, for a few months. Do you see Hong Kong still have a great future ahead, given that you're from the business sector? Be frank. Well, be frank, I come from the um, aviation, working there for 40 something years. I am totally confident Hong Kong has all the advantages over our competitors. Um, especially um, the friendly competitor. And I'm confident the business will be back once and when um, the situation is coming under control and then the city is opening up. All right, we have to leave it there. And Secretary, thank you for enlightening us on how the new government initiatives will enhance Hong Kong's attractiveness to foreign investors. The Hong Kong spirit is indeed very much alive and with our niche in the business arena, will spur us on to achieving our maximum potential. Wishing you a pleasant evening and good night.